this morning we're out here searching for the swift fox. It's a newly started reintroduction here on the res. We try to find where its den is at and see if it has any babies. Yeah, pretty decent little buck there. Sam? Yeah. Right here. That's that See this long billed curlew? There's a variety of animals out here and it's pretty cool to see and be able to witness them. We've been driving around for about a week and a half and we have no luck. Yet. No luck yet. Is that a fox? Rock, 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 rock. Rock, rock. I spy a white rock. We're setting up a camera, a game cam, out here on the outside of this prairie dog town in hopes we see a, a swift fox. He's setting out a like a lure, pretty sure it's like a skunk pheromone. Set it about three feet in front of our camera and hopefully get a shot of a swift fox. Oh, I smell it from here. I can't. No, that's the worst part. We've been searching for the past two weeks without any luck. I haven't even seen signs of one. Not a... Those rolling hills are beautiful. The smells are different and there's a quietness that you don't see other places. I am a mother, a rancher, a great cook, and I'm also, I practice traditions of the Ani tribe. The land is the most important to us. Our customs, our language, our history, they all go hand in hand. In 1905, our tribe was down to 300 people. We were part of the vanishing Indians. The victory isn't that we won a big war. The victory is we survived and we're still here. That's our victory. All the animals that were indigenous to this area are important to us. Naha Takanan. I think they're beautiful. They are spectacular. Swift fox are smaller than a house cat. They have these long tails with a black tip. They also eat very small food items like insects, crickets, grasshoppers, or really small rodents. Swift foxes used to occur across the Great Plains, but in the midst of the 19th century, they were eliminated to almost 10% of their range Today, thanks to conservation efforts, they occupy more than 40% of their historic range. But unfortunately, that range is still fragmented. So what we're trying to do is connect those fragments. We need foxes that have different adaptations, exchanging genes with other foxes to make a more robust population. These animals that have been missing, there is an imbalance because they're not there. Of course, this is a good place for them to come because we might not see them all the time. There's a lot of places to go on the reservation, a lot of land to travel. We're gonna be reintroducing about 30 to 40 foxes a year for the next five years. And we're gonna source them from areas where they have healthy populations. Today officially marks the start of field work. We're gonna meet up with Dana Nelson, who's very familiar with the area, and she'll help us pinpoint the best locations to trap. It's a beautiful day, beautiful weather. It's gonna be fun. Okay, we got one.
trapping in Wyoming for the past two weeks. We caught 27 individuals. Each fox that we translocate to Fort Belknap receives a GPS collar that helps us monitor them. We want to know who is surviving, where are they going, and are they able to establish a home range? When we bring the foxes up to Fort Belknap, we don't just release them. We put them in what we call soft release pens. That is a pen that is above an empty prairie dog burrow, so the foxes have a place to hide. We feed them for up to five days. Here they are. Where's your girl? Where's the female? Yeah, good job. This guy is an adult male and there's a juvenile female in here. Oh, I see her. You're good. Don't want anything to happen to them while we're moving them to a new habitat. So coming out here this morning and seeing that all the foxes are come, they're drinking, they're eating, kind of hanging out by their new dens, that's really reassuring. Sometimes the foxes will dig their way out, which is great, but if they don't, we will release them by day five. Today is a big day, the day that we release the foxes onto Fort Belknap for the first time. We're gathering with the community to celebrate the return of soy foxes. I'm just really proud here today. No hat is back to bring balance here in Fort Belknap. It's good things like this that brings hope. You think about when the swift fox used to run with the buffalo and the prairie dogs and the coyotes out here and the birds. It's just gonna bring balance back to this land like how it should be. We have something to celebrate. Life, another reintroduction, a part of the puzzle being put back together. Some of you younger people, as you get older, you'll realize how important this is to us. We've been blessed. We've had a lot of different things come back here. Animals, ceremonies, holy beings. It seems like Fort Belknap has a lot of friends. And that's a great thing, something that we need to foster. We're saying thank you for this. The way I view it, they're a part of us. Opening those pens and finally letting them go free, that is it. That was the moment that I was waiting for. These little foxes, my people bled here for no other crime than just being ended. Why did these little foxes disappear out of the area? That's how we're related. To me, they're no different than my grandkids. I want to see my grandkids succeed. These ones, I want to see them succeed. I want good things for them. I want them to be animal happy, whatever that is. Maybe that's a full belly. Maybe that's not having somebody shoot at you. I want to see them happy. Each fox, do you remember that they have like a GPS collar? All of the 87 have all, GPS all, collars? All of them have GPS collars. We want to know where they're selecting to stay and how long do they survive? 
All of these dots, these are the foxes, and they're moving. Wow. And they're moving. Look at that. They're getting all the way down to Lewistown. So we have From some, here yeah. that have left the reservation? Yes. Isn't that something? Just a few cross the river to the south, and some cross the Milk River to the north. We yeah. have a den at Lake 17 now that has six puppies. So that's what we're going to be searching okay. for today. Okay. And we're gonna wait for them to come up so you can actually see those cuties. So yeah, so we'll go search for them. We're just gonna sit here quietly and wait for them to come out. I've seen them. It's really great to see something that you haven't seen for a long time. Is that a sign, you know, that things are coming full circle, that we're going to see things we haven't seen before, or coming back to the way they were? Makes you feel good about where you live and who you are. It's really something, saying something for our small community. I'm proud to be a Ani today. These tribes have been champions in reintroducing prairie species back to their homelands. They reintroduced bison in the 1970s, black-footed ferrets in the 90s, and now swift foxes. And it has been a joy working with them developing this project. My favorite part is working with Ani Nakoda students. At the end of the day, this is their home and we bring in students as interns to participate in this reintroduction. And slowly, we're transferring a lot of those responsibilities to those students. Being able to witness animals being reintroduced onto the landscape like the swift fox is a pretty special experience. Being able to have people that trust in me at the college to do this, it's a pretty honorable thing, I think. We have still yet to see one in this season, 2023. Uh, I feel like we'll see one because it's pretty cool out. It's only 60 degrees. They're so tiny, they, you can just drive right past one. So you want to look for any kind of movement you can. Should you go check that camera? Three thousand photos of grass moving. We're kind of by where uh, a GPS collar went off on one of our swift boxes. So we're trying to see if we can see it down out here on the Prairie Dog Town. What's that way out there? Is that a fox? Oh yeah, yeah. When I'm older, I'm hoping to be able to just drive down the road and see a swift fox just running across the road. I'm hoping they get stable enough to where they can just handle it themselves and we won't have to reintroduce anymore. They can just breed and keep going. They'll have stories about the swift fox now. I can tell my grandkids about, I remember when the swift fox was released, I was there. But I can tell them, you know, what it meant to us as Ani and Nakota people. This story will be passed down, this one right here. Mm -hmm. One of the signs of success of this reintroduction is the movement of the foxes. So foxes look for other foxes to mate with. Most of the foxes stayed very close to, to Fort Belknap, and that is a wonderful sign, meaning that they have what they need on the landscape. And number one thing is mates. You know, sometimes some things leave and and you always hope for them to come back. And that's part of the swift foxes, they came back too. Like we did, and like the bison did. Now they're here, they're reproducing in a place that they were gone for decades. I can't explain that feeling, because we did this as a team. We brought them back. Tonight, when I go to sleep, I know there's a piece of the puzzle that's here now and it's up to us to figure out what's going to happen 
how we're going to go about it, and what we have to learn. And that, that's something to look forward to.